Hello everyone. Um, hopefully I'm coming through well. I think that last time I had all of my settings set for this game and then I started playing Gunfire, but I think that the mic and audio is good. I'm gonna have to remember everything that's going on. Um, the first VOD that I had, again, just wouldn't upload. I have more problems with that than I'd like to admit. But uh, if I upload this to YouTube, which I'm planning on, then hopefully it's not too bad. I didn't get super far into the game. All I remember is that I was at this car. Oop, I don't know if it's closer, please. All I remember is that I was at this car. Kind of loud for me. I'm gonna turn it down. I was at this car, and I asked for my gun. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheating. I'm just gonna leave. So let's take a look at what we've got. Um, open trash container. There's a locked trash container. The manager, Garta, should have a key. Or I could use brute force. I just need a pry bar. I don't think I have a pry bar. Apparently, got this after the initial inspection of the dead body is done. Yeah, sure. End of day debrief. Kim's gonna answer my questions. Done this. I have to pay for my damages. Or I won't have to stay tonight. Yeah, they said they won't give me any money, the station did. Sylvie asked you to talk to Garta and tell him she's sorry. Go to the cafeteria manager and relay the news. Maybe it'll help somehow. Track down my badge and my gun. So many known must have know something about my last firearm. Maybe a district authority, someone high up in the union, or someone local who saw you with it passed out. Who made the call reporting the crime? Someone. Might take some time. So reported the hanging to the RCM. Uh, maybe if you find out who it was, it would shed light on the events. Sure. And then I need a sad song for karaoke, huh? On tape. What my badge missing and my gun. Interview the cafeteria manager. That's Garda, I think. Green snakes can choose missing a partner. You should. F oh, I did that. Ask him to tell us about the case. Okay. All right. So we have some stuff done here, huh? Uh, do we have tools? Also, my glasses. I need to get loosened again. I have a flashlight. I have chain cutters. And I do have a pry bar. So, here's my thought. I only have two things. I don't really understand what this is. Let's trace your drunken sets back home. Fall over, get up, get off the asphalt in 20 minutes, shuffle your face. In. The streets are frozen, caked with ice. Hmm. Um, sorry, one second. So, I don't really understand these.
at all. Um, I don't, they give like a bonus to certain things. Problem solution. It's a thought cabinet. No. Gayame le million. Le million. They said something about this last time. Whatever happened to. Uh, I'm gonna say GLM. <laughs> it was his amber mane and sparkling teeth beguiled the tattered remains of the nation. While you suffered and suffered, did he dematerialize in a cloud of cocaine dust or did he simply stand in the corner and melt into the slendering new lines of some starlit. Boy de Noir? I don't know. 20 years ago? Spare a thought for his great ass, too. Or wait, maybe he became a police officer and River Call West. Hmm. I don't know what these are. Um, maybe I should. The thought cabinet and its thoughts are a game mechanic offering insight into. Go away into your life prior to the case, as well as stat bonuses and other minor gameplay differences. Depending on choices made over the course of a playthrough, there will be a plethora of different thoughts to internalize. Not every thought can be earned in one playthrough, such as... Oh, whatever. Um, if a free slot's available in the thought cabinet, a discovered thought may be equipped to begin researching it. While a thought is researched, a temporary skill penalty penalty or bonus will be granted. During the process, the thought may be equipped and unequipped freely, Pausing or resuming the research. After a set amount of in-game time has passed, the equipped thought will cause a breakthrough, after which a white thought orb will appear and it will become permanently internalized. Forgetting a thought after this point will require a skill point to remove it, and it will be gone permanently from the thought cabinet for the remainder of the playthrough. Research time does not progress while sleeping. Uh, well, maybe I should internalize something, huh? My logic is down one. Well, that's unfortunate, but whatever. Is it, can I also do this? Yes, I can. Okay, sure. Why not, huh? Unlock. Spend a skill point. Where are my skill points? I'm so confused. Uh, there's no need for me to unlock one right now anyway, because I don't even have a third thought, so whatever. Okay, got some stuff here. THC thought cabinet. Journal inventory character maybe I didn't mean to do that I do have one skill point Okay, I'm fine actually leveling that up. Maybe that was stupid. I'm good with it. Okay, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yes. I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Feel like a traveler. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. Keep listening. From another planet. Hey there. What's going on it's here? Jam, my man. Sprawl of lorries. It's a traffic jam for the ages. 
Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating, an all-around clusterfuck. Eh? Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long-haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Upon days. Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes and mazout. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. Okay, so we have... love, however, a touch of sorrow. So tell me, what do you need? For a while, I'm not gonna ask him for money. Uh... It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands, no way in or out. Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. They'd know what's up. Precise demands and so on. Yeah. Ah, yes. From the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. Ka-ching! He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side. That's for sure. Sure. Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame them, really. Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. Okay. He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. Keep him busy, wasting time. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. Okay, well, what are you calling? Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Time to arrest him. Relax. He's merely joking. This is what I would say if I was an actual cop. Can't even get a few jokes past you, my man. I've got another haul of found cargo. Mostly sporting goods, track suits, and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grad in the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. Not unless they've illegalized sports equipment while I was on the road. This rockin' beauty. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. A motor lorry, also called a camion, on Caillou and neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of found rust bucket. Maybe the A6. Good eye, my man. Yup, she's an old one, but reliable. Me and her spent a long time together. Okay. There it is again. A little touch of sadness beneath his cool. He thinks he spent too long in this lorry. We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. Sure. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. It's a white check. I'm gonna go for it. So, empathy four. That's... Oh wait, formidable is 13. But I have a bonus of four. I see, I see. Okay, come on now. Ease into Shit. it. Don't go too far. This seems like a personal matter. I'm okay, man. Just 
The jams got me down. The fumes, the chemical rainbows, the tarpaulin stretched on the frames and the dull engines off. Maybe the full-on direct approach wasn't correct. Damn, it's tricky business looking into someone's eyes and not doing it. Huh? Oh, the bosses, man. Makes sense. It sucks is what it does. Maybe don't tell people. The people they don't like are actually right. Yeah, I didn't know what else to say. Don't be a stranger. Okay, well, he was nice. Uh, some of these options are not my favorite, but... Try to be, uh... Walk up here, huh? Humanox. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air. With the aid of numerous, a silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III. Not a good track record of mental health in that family. Yeah, no, it's not. Let's go to shot here. I have five. I need an 11. What did he do? Oh. You have no idea what you did a week ago. How would you know what this guy did many centuries ago? High above you, the king stands triumphantly oblivious to your memory trouble. White tank top. Looking for money. Oh, here's a person. Money. Let's go. something on her radio a photograph is clutched in her hands and there is a warm smile on her face the photo an ambrotype from the turn of the century as golden as her smile it's the warmth of a winter night's fire maybe she could give you comfort and shelter some cigarettes and food money maybe she's your Snap your fingers. Just say excuse me. No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Nothing. Her smile just keeps widening. Her hair is gray like lead. Wait. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Why? I just told you why. Uh, okay. Is there any more money around? I am scrounging. how idiomatic talk to this guy before he's a racist huh Scott? you're hazy on the notion of a scab smells like politics though 
Maybe it's got something to do with the flask he reaches for from time to time. A kind of a worm. Content with mere survival. They come, they want to do our job for shittier pay, screwing over both themselves and us. Everybody loses. Beats me. Somewhere in the ground, I think. Gotta be bloody stupid, or freaking evil to scab. Or I guess, scared, maybe. But scared of what? Of who? Personally, I'd rather beg than scab. If the gentleman shouting on the street came begging, maybe they'd have gotten something. This. We'd explain the matters, but they don't listen. This lot would be reasonable and go home if the big guy wasn't riling them up all the time. Hmm. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> Speaking of, what brings the RCM here, to the wild north? River call Come to see the strike? something. Come to Martinez. Investigating a murder. Needs to know what's going on behind these gates. <laughs> murder, huh? That sounds like a lot of hard work. You'd never see me investigating a murder. Very fun and easy. You're right. Uh, none of these are... Of course, Policia. It wasn't me. You can rule me out. Easier that way. Should we? He's nice. I don't like nice. He didn't do it. It's the truth. Okay. My friend, I respect the right to roam. The open range awaits. I don't operate in that capacity. I'm not a granter of passage. The passage grants itself. I walk right past Measurehead and go in. Yeah, the two and a half meter tall Semini Supremus is there. Walk right past him. Oh. Then press the button to unlock the door, then go past him again, and you enter the arbor through the office. It's that. Don't worry, I'm sure it's not completely impossible. For example, you could best measure head in a physical confrontation. I can't. Or you could convert to a Semini Supremacist worldview. Or, hmm, maybe it actually is completely impossible. Not yet, no. He's incredibly strong. Jean-Luc himself would say the philosophy has proven overly heroic for the scabs to convert to. Not enough intuition. Sure. How much can I ask for money? You know, serious business. I'm sure the big boss will be glad to tell you. You'll have to ask him first. He's a chatty guy. He is. wants to talk about the strike. Return once you've met the union boss and are on a better footing with the organization. Yeah. Return once you've met the union box. Okay. That's fine. How do I get down? So dumb. Bastards! We have a right to work. Hold up and stay frosty, everyone. 
cops are here. You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. Why should I? We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work! Right to work! Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Rights of people, rights of workers, to have gainful employment, to make a salary, and feed their families. His manner of speaking is wooden. The tone of voice bland and uninspired, almost as if compiling replies from a set of learned phrases. Might be time. Don't let the fat bastards tread on you. Cops tend to side with the higher-ups, but you're essentially still workers. I don't trust cops, but I can see you understand the... Right to work! Right to work! Maybe you should ask them questions, like why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you! We have families to feed you, piece of shit. So do we, Scott. I want to get into the harbor, too. Have fun. <laughs> Union shits are on full strike. Don't think they're going to let you through the gates. I'm trying to meet their fat boss. I know nothing about a murder. The mention of a killing sends a barely noticeable shiver of tenseness through him. Interesting. Wouldn't put it past these harbor bugs. They'd do anything to stay alive. Right to work! Mm. It's shameful. Cops doing nothing. You should bring back up and open up the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. We are not picking a side in this just yet. Pity. Let us work! When a bunch of ungrateful, lazy cops can't get their act together decide to block honest work for other people okay so there's a strike of union folks that want like better pay better conditions and then these scabs are like oh we'll, we'll do it beats me they mumble nonsense about board rules and workers rights while we have the right to Work! There's something odd in the way he carries himself. His set of clothing looks vaguely mismatched. The different pieces of the attire seem ill-fitting. His shirt is far too small and an unpleasantly tight fit, while the overalls held up by a belt seem to fit a man with much more corpulence. He ignores your question, choosing instead to turn to the emaciated workers, raising both this in the air. The clothes are obviously not his. Silence is the answer. There's something off here, but he won't say what. Honest men and women with rights to work, to be useful, not toys for corporate interests. We came here to help the harbor run smoothly in time of crisis. If union fucks don't want work, they ought to let in those who do want work i have a question why do all these men follow your leadership you think they follow because i'm big and loud no they follow the rules of the market the rules of the economy because they were given a job to do you've been talking to him for quite a while now something is off with this guy ask him where he's from what's it to you A suspect done no crimes I only fight for the rights of people we're all workers right workers stick together came from the eminent domain from Jamrock backgrounds in odd jobs heavy lifting 
Cargo hall. Bouncer world. I know the drill. Worked at Territory. Ring a bell. Uh-huh. It was a long time ago. Hmm. Oh no 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 no. Wanna... We were promised work. We'd be in there working if the bastards hadn't shut the gates. Main gates locked. Would take heavy ordnance to bust it open. Try to get in through the secretary's office. The door is locked. The guards blocking the way to the access panel. And I don't mean the scrawny mess punk either. I mean head measurer. Or whatever he is. Huge Semenes guy standing up there on the overhead passage. Won't let anyone by. The access panel is right behind him. Bad. Standing on a narrow bridge, he's got a strategically advantageous position. And he's trained. I don't know how the Union has a trained killer up there. But that one's no joke. And my men are tired and hungry. They're workers, mm. not fighters. Why don't you go arrest them instead? I'm sure they've done plenty of criminal shit. They have that look. It would be better for the neighborhood if you went home. At least for now. If you can't get in anyway. No! They will give up eventually. Or get drunk. Leave the button unguarded. Then we charge. Okay. Okay. Okay, so just try to press button behind time. Hermetically sealed door locked by electronic means. be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm, Ham Sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not a threat to me. What is this androgynous display of sexual maturity? Merely standing up makes you sweat profusely. Your breathing is erratic. Your own heartbeat in your ears grows frantic, and you feel your blood pressure rise. Yikes. Stop it! You are embarrassing. <coughs> Pedo Marfak? This display of weakness may appeal to older women with a stronger maternal instinct. Jean Luc, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Maybe you can ask him to leave. That is precisely the negligence that has led you to succumb to Unruh. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Unruh emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Yes. 
Halhul. Halhul is an ancient Ilmaran poison, a parasitic fungus that has colonized your race. Intentionally fermented drinks have existed for 10,000 years. This is a fabrication the alchemists of Yizot and Bashir and the Holam al Hul have fed your people. No, why don't you have another drink? Your features are not yet congenitally deformed enough. Oh yeah, measure head. This is going well for measure head. Um No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around. Show him Talk. the hand still got him. Does this remind you of someone? The guy down there? Eugenics, electricity, uh, you dominated lesser cultures, like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You will be superseded. It is, baby, yeah, you know it. There is a button right behind him, just out of reach. It must be the one that opens a door to the harbor. It is my task to keep the degenerate trunks from entering the army. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history. Bring your troops to the Simenad Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of al Hul. Your beloved. There may be a peaceful solution to this. You could internalize Measure Head's race theory. He would take you as one of his own. Well, not as such. What you do with the mastery of advanced race theory is up to you. You could reject the findings, sure, or accept them and become an advanced racist. Um. Oh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race in it. There must be some friction there. He's keeping it well hidden, however. Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront polycultural capital. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed <laughs> to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. Communism is pretty cool. Of course you are. Above all, rampant multinational finance still reigning large. Tell me where have you gotten your love of pathetic communism from degenerate youth culture rock and roll music stop explaining yourself no one cares about your beliefs the conversation has moved <laughs> of course it does you are a degenerate individualist and a rock and roll rebel I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. The South Island race, Aplogroup R4R. 
We are the rightful masters. I don't know what this dude's yapping about. I am a descendant. The narrow streets of Ulumbuir are with me in my genetic dreams. I see young Simonese women now. You would be appreciative if you did not further chase this line of inquiry in front of the women. Yes. This could have made him more open to discussing the race enigma with you. Tactful in front of the woman. Ask what kind there of races go. there are first. Classification is called to this stuff. Do you? There are three categories of race. Type A, the heroic races. Type B, the servile races. Those are the Simonese, the Areopagite, the Mon and the Occidentals. The point where they find it impossible Excluding to smile? Excluding the Mao, of course. A receding genetic pool has led the Mao on reprehensible street parades. You know them by the names of their nation states. Mahun is, so is a derogative term for first world people of Gottwaldian descent. They do not all have eczema. Also, people of Katla, like the Sulu and the Hugu, are much more lactose intolerant. In some municipalities of Morania, people do wear shoes made of wood to street parades. The mound are proof that you can have too much occidental racial purity and tassel centric. Culture. Inbreathing has led to a lactose intolerant subrace. The Vespertines and Messinians of Vesper and Messina. The ancient Meteorans of Mateo by the Golden Pit. I don't know. The I'm skipping Lord. a lot of this. This dude is just yapping. Seriously. Are too yellow and oleaginous to count as a heroic race. Overproduction of seaweed. Sebum is leaking into their brains, as proven by the Maun and the Mask. Occidental Tipa is in retrograde. The Semenese and the Areopagit are the indigenous people of this. The Insulindian archipelago. The Areopagites are the master race of the Ilmaran deserts. The Semenese are descendants of the Areopagites. This is crazy racism. I mean, this guy is booked up on being a racist. Didn't Ilmaran desert pygmies invent alcohol and get pillaged just a short while ago? No, those were Simita wilding race losers of Zarafa, Izet, and Bashir. With the Jean, baby, you're on fire. I know, babe. The Areopagites are sleek, long-headed. The latter is perfected and adapting. Together, they form the Simeno Areopagite, or nature was not capable of more. Type B are the unheroic races. Amorphous non compet The Koikos of Grad, Yugo, Jimsk, Chest et al. are what you would call white officer in a suspect description. Yes, to an untrained eye, the Koiko appear white and pinkish, like a hand sandwich. Pinkness is a racial quality that has to be earned through centuries of advanced ballistic warfare. The what? The countless micronationalities of Grad are all inexplicably obsessed with Bodat. The only thing they like more is divided kind of... into microscopic ethnostates, like political amoeba. In a game or in real life? Uh, I have a cat. He might have. He might have been in here. Wouldn't he be one for ethnostates? They are 
microscopique. Its leaders will be the genetic. I just. Acholians, halfway between Type A and the Racial Colbron. Is it 82,000 years that we've been recording history? You have very little idea of what is happening. But that seems a little off. The mysteries of the people of this planet are a tragedy that has played out countless times over. Like a fever dream of skin, hair, and bone. Wake up, my chest breath. The revolution came to the revol- Enough of Tibet mediocrity. Tips the F are a museum of failed chimeric experiments and tragic maladaptations. They are tortured creep lesser races like the mosquito. Grotesque mixture of a mask woman and a Semenese man. The mosquito is born sterile, like a donkey. Oh, then there is the Semino Koiki Chimera. Are you sure you wish to know of the Semino Koiki? The Koiko, as you know, are very simple, especially when they meet the rich man. Racial scientists have toyed with the idea of crossing the Simonies with the Koiko to produce it. This will never happen. The Simonies and the Koiko may have similar interbreeding problems. Isn't a um, what enough? Can Koiko? It is cruel to entertain ourselves with the deformities of Tipse F. Were there any able-bodied races you needed education? You understand nothing. To solve the great race enigma, you have to first ask yourself, what is the race enigma? You have not even... You need to internalize what you have heard here today. Then return to me. This clarity does not come instantly. I cannot possibly imagine what else we have to discuss, Tibere Basholian. Your love for disco music and venereal disease? What if after all of this, I just rolled two sixes and knocked him out? I think this racist is better than the last, but the next racist will be the really good one. <laughs> that will be the... He will grant us three wishes. Your pedomorphic friend has quick wits. A protruding occiput. The lieutenant does not flinch. You should keep him close. The congenital defect of farsightedness does not render him a complete. Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw oh my a phrenologic grid on my skull and features. Your Say silence nothing. betrays your inferiority. You do not have a reply. You should enter a deep race slumber. Perhaps in 4,000 years, there is need for a servile homunculus. This dude is like... He knows everything there is to know about being a racist. Like, that's scary. Yes. I guess I know. you don't have anything to say about this dude? Talk to the union boss yet? Hold on, wandering man. How can I help you? <laughs> Excuse me. Come on, Ken. We'll go somewhere somewhere useful. It's fourteen forty-two currently. It's kind of in the middle of the day. I think we should be able to.
Oh, this is different. I thought it was the... Okay. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten cents. Hmm? Oh, that's the tear machine. It's a machine for tear. You know, you find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, and put it in the machine, then it gives you money. You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out, so... Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there are some out there, somewhere. Okay. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint-Baptiste. Their logo is the bloodless rose, pure white, untouched by her. Um. Just ask me if you need anything from Saint Baptiste. We don't stock prescription meds, but we do have Nosafed, Duramine, Magnesium, and Hypnogamma. Nosafed is probably decongestant. Dramamine is probably a um, anti-like nausea for like vertigo and motion sickness. Magnesium for headaches. And then Hypnogamma is probably a sleeping pill. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Nosafed is a nasal Ooh, spray. It's a pain Duramine is a really good painkiller. Magnesium is a dietary supplement. Hypnogamma is. I don't really know what Hypnogamma is. I guess it makes you feel less shit. It's recommended to use after lots of partying, studying, or exercising. Uh huh. Saint Baptiste, you know, the pharmaceuticals company. Saint Baptiste Pharmaceuticals, the one that sells meds out of Saint Baptiste. She is right. Saint Baptiste, the company, derives its name from Saint Baptiste, the city. Itself so named because that's what it is. A rare case where that really is the full etymological history. As. Okay. Can I just talk to her like as a person? Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. What's that magazine she's reading? You mean this? This is Pop Stars. It's got like famous people in it. It's not for sale. Looks like it also has something called Police de la Mode, featured on page 34. This speaks to you. Okay. Um, it's where they rate different outfits famous people wear. It's kind of funny. They're kind of mean. It's about who's the most stylish. Um, no. I don't like it. I hate it. We are not the fashion police. We're the real police. I don't know. Frit? A 7 to 11 grocery store. I think they think that the extra tea makes it funkier. The story goes that normal Fritta with two teas, a men's workwear shop in Vredefort, was already taken. So when Fritta Retail Inc. grew into a multinational corporation, they had to add an extra letter to avoid trademark infringement. Hmm. Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but, um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... Not really. Um, no. I didn't know him at all. Okay. I don't know, really, like, maybe that's a little funky. long. Um, I don't know. No need to worry. It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know, okay? Okay. Uh-huh. Alright. So that's that, huh? 
colorful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles lined the shop wall. There, in that dark green glass, all in vain. The great flowing river of warmth, wine, alcohol, beer, alcohol, love, alcohol. The beauty, the truth, the poetry of it all. I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health, but I guess you already know that. Don't ask, don't look, don't do anything here. Just go away, get back to work. Okay. Yeah, I can't do that. Oh, there's magnesium. Um, we need to go back into the Whirling Inn and. Oh, you lied. You lied to me. I, I remember this. I believe it's snowing again. It felt like springtime just a few days ago. Well, uh, this might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. Yes, think about the cute grandma, not the weird snow. Red check. We can do it. Come on. Stop looking yes. at her. Look around. What do you see? That's right. And the canal. The bookstore. The harbor gates. This is a great vantage point for keeping an eye on you. Glad to have been of service. Now you know the locals are keeping tabs on you. Hmm. Okay. I can't believe it's it felt like springtime. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I remember she was lying earlier. About working in the greenhouse. We need to talk to Garta. We need to talk to Garta. Can we talk to this guy? That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? An hour would have been bad. Two hours is mystical. You have truly wiped out all trace of yourself if you haven't thought about rum and lemonade yet. Maybe you haven't turned out well for your drinking. Have you thought about that? Get a goddamn rum and lemonade to yourself, boy. Or what happened, man? You used to be cool. Go huh. get your boring normal person drink. Get your drink on and your act together. I don't know. Okay. We're good. We're good. Talk to this guy. Is this the light the check I can do? Isn't it? Perhaps he's on his way to where you just came from. Into the primordial darkness. White check. The worker continues Shoot. to nap, undisturbed, despite you shaking him. This guy. All right.
Can I help you? Mine? No, it belongs to the whirling in rags. Well, that's what we meant, obviously. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors, too. They put their trash there and they don't pay. I thought as much. And are you the only party with ex- Well, yes. I it seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. Prod at him and find out. Um, what do you need them for? It concerns the case. Please cover it. Just bring them back once you're done, please. Wait, what? But what about the bird? Yes, the bird. I found it lying on the floor with a broken wing the morning she left. You broke the skewer! I assure you it was him. It's as if he can't decide whether to be angry or relieved that it was you again. Well, it's noble to be honest, Why I think. Why on earth did you have to break the skewer? I can't believe it. I was so sure it was Sylvie. Even worse, I thought she was trying to send me a message. A tender type of hope. Something stirs in you. All right. Did she say anything else about me, you know? Did, did she say anything about me? Really? I, I should I should give her a call then. Thanks, I guess. Was there anything else you wanted, or...? Or can you give him a moment? Somehow you realize this is not going to net you any professional discounts. Already he's reverting back to defensive. Okay, come on, Mama. All right, uh, well... Let's go unlock the trash. I have a pry bar. But look see here. We gained experience. And we don't need it. We're gonna see Kuno. God, this kid is so annoying. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, with a well-oiled crack. The lock pops open. It should now be possible. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. There is, but you won't like it. Sweat forms on your brow. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. We're just in time. This hasn't been empty for over a week. You see, milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. A box falls into pieces in your hands. A tea sole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. And among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage. The victim's clothes? Cadaver in odor is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Drop them in here, officer. Guitar mark blue jeans. Pockets empty or empty. He wore them with a belt, too, a white belt. The loops appear stretched, but the belt is missing. That's it. There is something slimy catches your eye. Yeah. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. This is a military type overgarment. Yeah. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that. All right. We should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. 
Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash. The lid was locked and this establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. A lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. That's disgusting. Nothing. It's nothing. Nothing more to see here. What's this? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you could... Officer, is that your paperwork? Yes, it is. Look. This plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form. If you don't mind my asking, how could you have let your paperwork end up in the trash? Well... His eyes express a rare condolence. Lucky we found it. You should take stock of what remains. Just to be sure, some has not made it into the hands of the RCM's adversaries. Yeah. Organized crime and the like. There might have been police secrets in your notes. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? Some items, such as the ledger you found, are interactable. Go to your inventory and select the Interact tab to read your paperwork. Okay, okay, mug. You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man, for only in its social sensibility. Mm -hmm. You've acquired an interactable item. Investigate this item further by going to the Interact tab in your inventory. Okay. The container sounds a muffled gong. That's one thing off the list. I think we got it all. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. The container sounds a muffled gong. Yeah, I don't know why it was like... Ungrayed out. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copo type. Yes, guess what's yours? No, you're the sorry cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Huge lack of enthusiasm going on in here. Oh. You know, Apocalypse, Superstellar, The Advanced Interesting Cop, Liquid Shadow Cop. But you're too sorry to say those things. So, here we go. What? Jealous of the sorry cop? They'll be super, super fine. It'll be totally okay. You can dual copotype from sorry to anything. No, you don't. Come on, you'll be back to saying sorry in two minutes. Stop wasting time and begin the repentance. Okay. Of course you are. It's okay. See if you can get something out of this, like info. Or maybe every time you say you're sorry, you get a million bucks. But that won't happen. <laughs> Thank you, Logic. Okay, interactable stuff. Inventory. I already have a shirt, huh? This one's better. Interact.
interact. It's the legend found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper. It's a metaphor. Below the pathetics? Terror. Do not look into its blue heart. It's just toilet paper sticking to the back of the plastic clipboard. Still wet, the toilet paper peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off with your finger and voila, the ledger now looks marginally better. <laughs> An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. What? Yes, uh, allogen watermark used for adding information to RCM property. It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Okay. How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. Okay. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. Work, strife, Poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51 this year. The exact number is hard to estimate due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. That's okay. We all do, sooner or later. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the Unsolvable Case. Wow. Others appear more light-hearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the Ukar Parlor. Even the rare Article 3 collapsing tenement. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them, up close. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. 
It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that to amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. Rail spiked through the head. Ugh. It was a workplace accident. It's terrible. There is for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Sadly, the letter only comes with an old worn down lead pencil. It's unfitting of this monumental event. The lieutenant looks at his blue notebook. Two fat, shiny pens hang from the binder. It's downright incriminating. He has little choice but to give you one, although he really does not want to. He is not really saying anything, just standing there, looking at them. Know that I give this to you with resentment. The task you've completed flow out of the blue oblong pen in a brash freehand uncannily similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. No, actually. Any ideas? The Furies are at home in the mirror. Oh my god. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. The hanged man. I'm going to start calling it the hanged man. It's good we sorted this out. Okay. Like you that. don't exactly close them. So much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Uh, let me do this. We can, I really want to pass this white check. It's In yellow the paper. back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to type of form. Three. The topmost are misconduct fines. The middle ones are station calls. And the bottommost are field autopsy forms. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. But they appear pleasantly vague. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call it's, are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. It's interesting that it seems that there's still these like penalties in the forms because like nobody responds to the police in this a in this world. They only respond to the union. Paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copy of paper. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. Blue. The blue heart. Don't look into it. The blue heart. Okay. 
Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. With your hands, you four-sized pages hang from the clip, screwed to the top of the board. Shoot. This is the lonesome long way home. How? Okay. Shoot. Alright. Chill for now, I guess. The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat. The stuff of death itself. And then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. Arson, petty theft, spousal abuse, handwritten logs on dozens of investigations. You don't exactly close them I think so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. I'm gonna try They're to do this. a little this. further from your nose now. Come on, come on. Eleven. Yes, yes, you can piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin. It always begins with HDB41, then date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene, followed by the title. For example, HDB41120117 The Next World Mural. Why, yes, your precinct number is 41. Every last alphanumeric in the files begins with it. And these are your case files. It's safe to say HDB are your initials. I got nothing here either. Logic really isn't the best faculty to have this conversation with. But it's the one you got. Yeah, we're staying out of this business for now. HDB is bad news from yesteryear. It's shit, Honcho. It takes about half an hour to piece one together using the system you've devised. Where do you want to start? This one is relatively easy to reconstruct. Overnight on 1202, a graffito, nay, a mural, appears on an eight-story tenement overlooking central Jamrock. The building is a sparsely inhabited ghost tower, part of a failed real estate development called Grand Couron. Cause of failure, rent too high. The mural is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. The text cut into their form reads. Eight story tenement. True love is possible only in the next world. For new people, it is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. People call it that thing and that fucking thing. It's visible for miles. In two days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to remove the bummer. You and your partner are assigned to the case. The graffito crew is easy to track down. Only the bell lectures have the literage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They take responsibility for the execution, but not the design. The ideologue of the next world Nero, as the crew calls it, remains an unknown. The case files do not show you finding the author of the design. The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner, JV, is against the removal. Citing public support for conservation, this leads to a debate in Precinct 41, which then spreads to the streets of Jamrock, ending in a rare plebiscite organized by you and the rest of Row 3. Why? The 9,000 he... people subjected to the mural's message, all of Lakeside, Central Jamrock, and Villa Lobos, plus half of the eminent domain, participate in the vote. Although the case begins with what appears to be a lot of rambling on the streets as to how juvenile and stupid the mural is, given a choice between two options. Uh, I don't really understand the message behind it. I a just... staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. Turns out the opposition were a loud minority. 
And that love truly is possible in the next world for new people. And it is too late for us. What the heck? No one cares what you believe in, man with the smelly toilet ledger. What do you want to tackle next? Or are we done? A.K.A. Leslie and Burke. A.K.A. The public indecency drunk and the property damage drunk is a cursed case. It has been passed from unsuspecting officer to unsuspecting officer for 10 years. On January 29, the unsolvable case made its way to you. Why you accepted it, it is unclear. Every officer, and indeed most civilians in general, know it's unsolvable. Leslie mm. will always take his pants off when he's drunk. Burke will always trash everything. It's just what they do. It is their nature. You cannot change the nature of a man. And you can't lock them away because public indecency and small-scale property damage are not punishable by incarceration. The only way for Leslie to stop flashing his genitals to bypassers and for Burke to stop dismantling signage and rear-view mirrors would be for them to stop drinking alcohol, which, in their forties or fifties, it's hard to tell because of their distorted features, is a medical improbability on par with you ceasing to produce the expression. You would think that, but you're wrong. Where's the fun in exposing your genitals or breaking stuff in your own home? No, Leslie and Burke are on the corner of Main Street and Perdition because that's where the action is. So what's the case then? Threatening, fines, dragging them to the station, locking them up in the hell holes they live in, locking them up in the station, hypnotherapy, even trying to get the local gang of Zemiaki to take them out. The Zemiaki gave them ethanol so Burke and Leslie would expose and rampage even harder. You tried it all, and still the complaints wouldn't stop, as they hadn't stopped for ten years. It's plain to see from the files that you, Satellite Officer JV, and Special Consultant TH, had more important cases to attend to. You uncover cross-reference to several ongoing investigations, each brought to a standstill every time you drive down Main Street. Because there they are, on the corner of perdition. And what is Leslie doing? Leslie is the public indecency. Good, you're learning. If the files are to be trusted, that's all there is to it. That and Burke breaking things, and the fact that they're both drunk. But then again, so are you. The case becomes considerably less comic one day when Burke takes a swing at your ledger. Mm. He must have it confused with the property he likes to damage. But the joke's on him. You're drunk out of your mind on potent Pilsner. You slam the hardened plastic board in his oh. face. Then you proceed to beat him unconscious with it. Okay. In the process, the ledger sustains damage. The compartment within reserved for permeable documents, is jammed shut. You stop your assault on the now unconscious Burke to open it, but are unable to do so. The officer began to cry, reports Leslie, who, at this point, is tending to Burke. He came at us, and at us. I think he was trying to kill Burko. While trying to kill Burko, you slowly come around. The permeable's compartment is open, You've smashed it open on poor Burko's kneecaps. The good news is, Burke can't walk anymore. Mm. Can't get out of his apartment, an invalid. With Burke to tend to, Leslie cuts back on the indecent exposure. Maybe he flashes his genitals to Burke. Who knows? But Sorry, both drunks are off the street. Comment the complaint stopped. Just now. The unsolvable case is solved. Okay, so it was an unsolvable case until Burke tried to reach for our ledger, and we actually beat the life out of him, made him completely invalid, as they say. Now we can't walk, and so they don't get drunk anymore. 
Which That's great. Is also why the officer responsible uh -huh. narrowly escapes a disciplinary hearing. Um, the end. Do you want to read another one? I think I'll read through these. Uh, this is Disco Elysium, Jack. It's a detective game. Uh, there is a man. I don't know if you can see it behind this uh, text box or whatever, hanging right here, and we are trying to solve the murder. Um, it's very convoluted right now, but we are a cop that doesn't remember anything because we drank ourselves so far down into literal amnesia retro or uh interrograde amnesia i think and so uh we couldn't remember anything when we got up and so i have just found i'm like i don't know probably four or five hours into it and i had lost i've lost my gun i've lost my badge and i lost my ledger with all my case files on it and i just found it in the trash can of this hotel that we are staying at and so these are all of the files. This was the unsolvable case, and apparently we beat the lights out of that drunk that was doing stuff. It would be stuff. very so interesting to read about these, stuff anymore. wouldn't it? I mean, there seems to be a square-shaped entry wound in the victim's the square forehead. Bullet hole murder. She's been sitting there for weeks on her rocking chair with a square hole in her skull, staring at the wall, her mouth agape. That's all you got. From the half hour you spent piecing it together, all you oh. know is the entry wound was square shaped. You never found the bullet. And then another body showed up, also with a square hole in his forehead. What? Who knows? Those pages are missing. What next? Oh, I just had a breakthrough on one of my uh, internalized things. Don't worry. One day, one, one day, day we'll solve you it. may still catch the man with the square gun. Okay, these take half an hour of game time to do, and that helps me with internalized thoughts. So here I have... Breakthrough imminent. Wait, how do I get a... Violet with a candlestick in the library? Easy. <laughs> Violet with a square-shaped candlestick. Okay, a free slot is available at this... When the thoughts research and temporary skill is granted, during this process, the thought may be equipped and unequipped freely. After a set amount of time in-game has passed, the equipped thought will cause a breakthrough, after which a white thought orb will appear, and it will become permanently internalized. Forgetting a thought after this point will require a skill point to remove it, and it will be gone permanently from the thought cabinet for the remainder of the playthrough. Okay. So this is just here, like all the time. Uh, I, well, do I have any more scope points? I whatever. Um, Lonesome Long Way Home is 77. Advanced Race Theory. I can, um, I can try to be, I can try to understand that Seminese racist that knew everything there was to know about being a racist. And maybe he'll let us through so I can enter the gate. Um... Do I want to do that? What I have rigorous self-critique also. You're one sorry piece of shit. A cop penitent, a flagellant cop monk. This is not the right line of work for you. You should be groveling at the feet of a feudal lord, providing lurid evidence against yourself at a Mazovian show trial, or ripping the flesh from your back with a cat of nine tails. Whatever made you this way, you can be damn sure it was your own fault. Do it really criticize yourself who knows you might uncover something of importance from your guilt-ridden past nice uh i am an embarrassment to the party for six hours i get minus one to my authority nobody takes me seriously that sounds like it's not good does this give me like huh is it like a good thing is my thing breakthrough imminent i I guess I'll do the race theory. I don't know. I'm fooled by absurdity. I Well, it doesn't take that long to do, so maybe... Can I unlock something else? Nice. I'm just internalizing every thought that I possibly can. Okay, I'm going to be, like, at an extreme disadvantage, but I'm just banking on the fact that these get... kind of a lot of research time while I'm looking through my notes okay the couch in an unexpected location some assholes brought the couch outside and hung out on it 
in the middle of the street, on the roof, on the hillside by the motorway. You know, at an unexpected location. They were young, and they thought they looked cool on it. They look cool like a rock band, they look really cool like models, they look like assholes. Um, what do I think? I don't know. Insufferable dicks. Young people are the worst. Mm. So anyway, you got a complaint about the damn sofa, or couch, or whatever it is. They were leaving it out in all these unexpected and whimsical locations. They took it to where they also took photos of themselves on it and smoked cigarettes and drank coffee because they felt it's intellectual. Yeah, this is weird. Cigarette butts, coffee cups, stupid couch. You had to clean it all up and you did. So congratulations to you. Case solved. No, you didn't have time for that. These notes show that you have what is called a real goddamn job. You don't have time to be chasing down the couch assholes. You have a real job to do. What next? Okay. Murder at the hookah parlor. Murder. It's kind of annoying, those guys. Tum, tum, tum. At the hookah parlor was a case originally assigned to an officer called Joseph Mills, <gasps> who Detective is now Mills. dead. Of circumstances completely unconnected to murder at the hookah parlor. Beaten to death by a throng of Villa Lobos gang members Jeez. when him and his partner J.M., only initials mentioned, answered a call one night. It's a sad story, and it isn't really represented in your case files. Stop stalling and get to the murder at the hookah parlor. Joseph Mills was on this case that he just couldn't solve. Was doing it solo. Said it was a real nutcracker. A real brain twister. Was on it for, like, a month. The captain got impatient. Shit or get off the pot, Mills. Mills didn't get off the pot. Not yet. He kept at it for a couple of weeks more, mm -hmm. racking his brains, running with every theory as outlandish as they seemed. Still couldn't solve the murder at the Uka parlor. Tough case, he said. Toughest he's ever had. Is he a good cop? No. He was awful. <laughs> Okay. Awful sense of humor. That might too. solve that. The worst jokes you've ever heard. Really rapey. Still, he'd been on it for months now. Said it was the final case. Said it was uncrackable. That murderer vanished into thin air. That goddamn hookah parlor was all he talked about. Sounds like a great guy. Okay. So the case is handed to you because Mills isn't getting anywhere. And you look into it. Here's the setup. A young man is found dead in a hookah parlor. You know, those places where you go and smoke bubblegum flavored vapor all day. <laughs> Can you get that? No, it's soot and water vapor. It doesn't do anything. Uh, both maybe? Yeah. So anyway, a young <laughs> man in his 20s found with his skull busted open right on the floor of the hookah parlor in the middle of the day. Jeez. No one else is in there. Only client that day. In perfect health, too. Some kind of movie producer. Well, first thought sounds like he might have been an employee. No one enters. No one exits. He's just sucking on his watermelon hookah all morning. All noon. Like he usually does. He's a regular. No calls. Nothing. Just sucking on the hookah until 1545. Then, bam. He's dead on the floor with his skull busted open. Blood everywhere. What happened? How can it be? Piano from the sky, case closed. <laughs> Great. Um, well, I'm wondering who decided it was murder. I, I'm i sure it was, but it, I mean, if nobody entered, nobody exited, and he was the only client that day, wouldn't it sort of make sense that it was an employee? Mills has no idea. Invisible assassin. Movie deal gone sour. Girl at the counter did it. Nothing fits. Eerie. Man just dropped dead. So you go to the parlor. You see cushions around the table. Tables low, heavy, really sharp edge. Bro has orthostatic hypertension. Sit up, passed out, hit you his see? head. See? You can't even read the thing without solving it. Yeah, it was that. Turns out hookah does do something. It turns off your brain's oxygen supply. And you don't notice it until you get up to go to the bathroom. 
Yeah, he liked his hookah. Stephen was his name. Wait, that actually happened? Smoking hookah. Didn't you hear? I don't know. Trying to come up with a movie script, maybe. Anyway, that was Murder at the Hookah Parlor. Joseph Mills wasn't a good detective, and about 30 minutes has passed piecing it together. <laughs> Next. Okay, well, that was it. So it wasn't even. That's why I said, I was like, who decided it was murder? Uh, Not much has changed, changed in the meanwhile. A bunch of sodden papers still <sighs> sacks okay. from the clipboard. So I'm. I think. I hope that my badge is inside of the ledger. Crack it on the knee like Burke. So I have minus one from Lonesome Long Way Home, and I just want it to finish. It's like it's finished. Breakthrough imminent. Like, can I can I get out of this and then I have like my breakthroughs or whatever? Here, so you put the ledger away. Can I have my breakthroughs, please? White thought bubble. Guillaume. Haha. Guillaume Le Million. This is the first one. Bad news. Guillaume Le Million did not become a cop. In 38, he went on a tour to the Sinyao province in Safray, where he died of autoerotic asphyxiation. Great. His body was found hanging from a decorative dragon tree in his junior suite mm -hmm. amid drug paraphernalia, unwholesome objects. And the Sylvia Trainer single, Wonderland, skipping in the background. And yes, you can take this as a metaphor for Revachol in the 30s. And also as a warning. Sweet. My bonus is plus one pain threshold. So blood oxygen is boring. <laughs> so I can drink more, I guess. And then all psyche learning caps are raised by one. Sweet. Lonesome. Long way okay, and then home. here's the other one. Lonesome long way home. Here we go. Home awaits. Walk past Station 41. So this is my house, market, apparently. Past the Boogie Street spearhead to the other side of the lake, the frozen eye at the center of the district. Then past the video rental store on the corner. There, at the end of a street lined with pine trees, a small house no larger than a matchbox. Match 11 oh Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone. And so are those people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? And where's the dealer? Hmm. You have to get back to work. That's all you have now. Okay, so I used to have a home. Now I'm homeless. Explains why nobody likes me in the station. I'm an avid or a uh, adamant drunk. Tried to drink myself to death, probably. Burned out on the cop business. What are the bonuses? Learning cap for perception has raised to five. Speed gives one psychological, I think that is, psychological point. Sweet. I'm close on advanced race theory, so maybe I can have another conversation with that Semenes racist guy soon. Okay, but I, I no longer have this, um, I no longer have this, uh, what's it called? Not a buff, a nerf for my opening the book or whatever so i should be able to get into the ledger damage ledger interact it's the ledger you found in the trash a cabbage of papers still from the board with the permeables drawer inside okay it's barely held together by a clip then made complete by the faint smell i have rhino cleaner i have to try this so i have to roll a 10 i have a 72 percent chance because i have some interfacing bonus and then basically a net plus one from learning about burke in the story where I beat the life out of him when I cracked his knees open. Okay, please, please, please hit. Yes, okay. The two sides of the board appear slightly misaligned. Oh, please be my badge. Or my gun. Oh, if you bend like the plastic on your knee slowly, please. The slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just, you know. Somehow I don't want. <laughs> Put the ledger. No, I, I want to see. Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. Two ticket stubs and a No! I thought it was my badge. Two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. Um. What? <laughs> two 
Two octopuses are smiling, reaching their tentacles toward each other in the colored pencil drawings. The tickets permit access to the zoo in Revachon East. The aquarium costs extra. These let you go there, too. Okay. Three's just... <laughs> You're playing Rocket League? <laughs> they should have this in Quick Chat in Rocket League. Wow, what a save. Sorry. And then this. Thin wax paper has been glued to a piece of cardboard. Sounds like leaves rustling when you pick it up. You see violet flowers, floral patterns, patches of glue. Yeah, okay. Well, it's not going to smell it nice. It smells of chewing gum. Apricot flavor. A touch of cinnamon. Perception the trigger. of summer. You think the label says, tutti frutti. Great. Familiar handwriting lines the inside of the card. Looped, round letters in a woman's hand. Um... A young woman in her twenties. There is care. Effort and a smile, you think. Although that is not something you can read from someone's handwriting. Some people can. Harry, it begins. You're already reading. I oh, our name's Harry! Letter, so you can read it when you wake up. Maybe it will make you happy. Oh, this is sad. Okay, so our first name's Harry then. H, what was our initials? HGB or something? Throw it away, please. A merciful wind blows Gotta in keep from the bay of Revachon, dusting the ground at your feet and raising newspapers far away. You feel the card slipping into it. That was that? Frisson covers your entire body, a feeling of cold, a persistent chill. I feel like I should read it. I don't know who this is. I mean, it might have been a... Shoot. It's probably going to be like a lover, like our wife or something died, I'm, I'm going to guess. Your hands hold on to it. shake, holding on to it. Every morning when I step out and you're asleep behind me, it says, I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest, down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows. By the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me entirely. I step onto the light rail and look back. Sparks fall from the bow collector. I know it will be like this until late afternoon when I get off the 42 and walk back to you. Jeez. You, you, every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul and I will always, always, always come back to it. Wow. Kisses, kisses, kisses. You feel the air sucked out of your lungs and the blood sucked out of your head. Everything around you gets dark. Wait. Small white dots appear. What's happening? You feel the ledger slip from No! Your hand. No! No, no. Hold on. I cannot lose this thing. To what? There's nothing. Detective, is everything all right? I I lost it. I just lost the ledger that I had. Oh my god, that's terrible. Wait, I died? Did I lose the game? Or am I just passed out? What? No shots. There is nothing. Oh my god, I died. That killed me. I just read a note. Again. Oh, past that er. Nothing said, brother. No treachery. I, I can't just believe this. Out. Well, almost nothing. There is the ground below you. That's still there. And the small light that's on, fluttering somewhere in the basal ganglia. Huh? What? That's me. Blue eyes. That's me. Who is what? He speaks of a sickening longing. 
the unwell Road emotion. Red 100 pa I just... Even in the darkness, he's grasping for This it. is how the game started, so I don't still know. I'm trying to hold on to the great I might still be alive, but just maybe dying right now. Slimy. Here in the paleomammalian cortex, we call it the shadow. Because it's always there. What? Bloated corpse of the past resurfacing. It was beautiful. Beautiful. Believe me, stupid, stupid ape. It's lack it's crazy. of beauty was not the problem. There is no Voyager Road. There are no roads, no houses, no lights in the windows. It. You think they would let you? Until you disintegrate into biomolecules. No. Someone is breathing on your face now, inspecting your pupils, stupid idiot. Is it Kim? It's probably Kim. Oh, but you are. They're pouring something on you. Something in you. It's water. It's delicious. Oh, is it alcohol, maybe? Kim lights on a dashboard emerge out of nothingness. It's Kim, yeah. The upholstered cabin of Lieutenant Kitsuragi's motor carriage, yeah. seated in the driver's basket. The air is thick with leatherworks and heavy fuel oil. Cold water runs down your chin. Drink. Water. Yeah, we have water to. Water is cold, silvery, the stuff of life itself as it pours down. Okay, well, so we didn't throat. die then. Okay. The pounding in your head recedes. The darkness parts. I got totally bamboozled because it said begin just like it did at the start of the game Drink. So i don't know you haven't drunk water in two days did you know the human body is not made to survive on alcohol alone you need a secondary form of hydration it's not With even a primary dogs, form of hydration it half a dehydrates of you anyway water. so some of it spills on the driver's seat the lieutenant pays no heed to it he's a good guy man what he's happened? he's kim is patient I should ask you the same. I came in contact with the burnt out ruins of the Oh my god. Uh I don't know, I guess I'll be honest. Sometimes either. Oh, the ledger He replies with such understanding. It's as if the burnt out ruins of the past were an occupational hazard. Athlete's foot for cops. <laughs> you dropped this. Are you okay to proceed? Good. Okay. The ledger of failure experience. and hatred is a special item that can be used both as an interactable and a tool equipped in your held slot for skill bonuses. Find it under the tools tab in your inventory. Now it's not the damaged ledger, it's the ledger of failure and hatred. Advanced oh, race I completed theory. advanced race theory. Okay, here we go. Everything is calm in the eye of the race storm. Your mind is lucid and bright. The mind-bending phylogenetics appear more distant and, to be fair, a little ridiculous. The great race mystery has cleared up. All that's left to do is verbalize your thoughts. Go and talk to Measurehead about your newly found insights. I gotta go talk to Measurehead at Simonies. Learning cap for rhetoric is raised to five and plus one conceptualization. The mystery is mostly aesthetic. I will accept this. Do I have any more skill points? No, I don't. What is my experience is 85 right now. So if I get up there, then I can put in white morning. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, probably a good place to stop here. We got to go talk to measure head and inspect my ledger again uh but we're getting up in the day so by night time then we have that debrief with uh kim and talk about the quote-unquote pissing contest between our precincts um good though i think it's it's good that was interesting i thought i died so i'm glad i didn't um all right well i'll probably be putting these on youtube um i think the next time i stream will most likely be Oops. I don't know, Monday maybe, Tuesday, sometime, a, a, t a day soon. Um, okay, so uh, Jack, and then 
whole thing person that was here in the beginning i'm sure if you're still watching but if you're watching now or in the future hope you enjoyed it as much as i did have a wonderful rest of your morning afternoon or night whatever applies to you hope to see you at the next stream